Hi, y'all. I'm Mike. I'm Beryl's husband and actually a um, part-time astronaut, but retired on account of the COVID. So any rates now I'm helping Beryl cook sometime, and mainly I do the meat. So that's why I'm, I'm cooking today. Today we're making a beef brisket boneless short rib. Now I'd never heard of a beef brisket boneless short rib before. I was in the grocery store the other day. I was looking for a steak, and this was right next to it, and I said, man, I never heard of that. I'm going to have to try it. So anyway, so here we are. We're going to make a beef brisket boneless short rib. And before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and put on that post notification bell so you know when we upload another awesome video. If you don't know what braising is, which I didn't know until a few minutes ago, I knew how we was going to cook it, but I didn't know what it was called. Anyway, braising is when you sear your meat, and then you actually cook it. See, this is a tough piece of meat. Um, actually, this thing was, um, we got four of these things in there, $8. And the steak I was looking at, I went to get a steak, it was like $20. So I said, let me try. So anyway, I'm heating up this um, skillet here, and we're going to start out by searing these um, pieces of meat. Now the ingredients we're using today is of course we have the uh, meat, the um, boneless short ribs, but um, otherwise we got some different kind of oils. We have avocado oil which is great for searing because it has a really high temperature. You can get it real, real hot without it um, smoking and burning on you. Um, and we're going to use some red wine. Now, I've never used red wine before in cooking. Actually, we did one time, a long time ago. We made something called burgundy beef stew, and it was good. And the deal with um, wine in there is the wine is not really, um, it just makes it taste better. That's all there is to it. And the alcohol burns off, so if you're concerned about the alcohol, don't worry about that. The alcohol burns off, but it makes the whole deal taste a whole lot better. So I'm going to use it. What else we got here? Granulated garlic. Our seasonings are granulated garlic, salt, and pepper. And we use those three things on just about everything. And also, we use Tony's on just about everything. Okay, well, all this skillet's heating up. I'm going to season the meat. First thing you want to do is pat it dry. And it just helps the seasoning stick to it better. And so I'm going to put, first of all, I'm going to start with some salt. I'm going to put plenty of salt because I like salt. Some people don't. I do. And this stuff is going to add to that pretty glaze. So I've salted it up good. I'm going to use some fresh cracked pepper. You can just use pepper out of a can, but they say this tastes better. I don't know. And I like garlic, granulated garlic. On all of our meat, use it on our seafood. And I use it generously. Okay, so there we go. Now we're going to turn it over and do the other side too. Same procedure. Going to pat it good and dry to help that um, stuff stick. And we want to get this pan just smoking hot. Okay, now I'm going to put some avocado oil in this skillet. You can use olive oil or just whatever you have. I like avocado oil when I'm um, searing steaks because it has a high heat tolerance whatever you might call it it's not really necessary but i got it and we use it we get this um oil all spread all around see it's smoking a little bit now it's getting getting pretty getting there and we're going to sear this meat on all sides then we're going to set it aside and make our um brazen liquid or gravy, as it's known here in Louisiana. Now, if it wasn't sizzling like that, it wouldn't be hot enough, and that might cause the stuff to stick. So the sizzle is what you're after. So what the searing does, it's, it just makes the meat taste so much better. Okay, so I'm going to turn these things over. Whee! 
searing your meat makes it prettier and makes it taste so much better. And it gives you that, um, that caramelization in your, in your pan to where you can um, make your gravy. And you, gravy made with these drippings, pan drippings, that's the only way to go, folks. You don't want that stuff, you know, some powder you buy at the grocery store for 59 cents. We make real gravy around here. So anyway, I'm just going to go a couple of minutes on this side. Folks, let me know in the comments if I'm a natural at this or you need to um, get back to barrel more. Because I'm kind of liking it. Okay, I'm trying to do these things on their side now. Okay, folks, these things are um, good seared. Brown, got that caramelization and everything. So I'm going to take them off. So now we're going to make that um, glazing sauce in this same pan. But this pan is too hot right now because I had it on high for searing. So I'm going to take it off, just set it over here on our stove for a few minutes, let it cool off just a little. Okay, so oil's hot now, so I got right now olive oil in here. Got a, one whole yellow onion cut up. And I got um, some garlic chopped up a little that I'm going to put in there. And one whole clove just cut in half. Come back, Jack. Now I'm just going to put in there down and kind of rub around in here. But otherwise I'm just going to, we're going to saute this stuff a little bit and then we're going to add some more um, stuff. Okay, so I've just been sauteing these um, onions a little bit. Gotten kind of brown, it doesn't matter how brown they get. We just want them to pick up all this flavor from um, that meat. And you can see the bottom of this pan, if I had a good camera person could come and show you that the bottom of this pan is clean now. And it's because these onions and these garlics have picked up all of that stuff. So you can use this kind of like a ice, kind of like a sponge. It keeps falling apart. Yeah, that's all right, doesn't matter. Okay, so now what am I going to add? Oh, I'm going to add some tomato paste. And they got a French name for what this process is, but... I don't know what it is, and it don't matter. But um, it's going to help us make just a fabulous sauce, the cooking sauce that we're going to cook these um, those short ribs in. So you put in one of these little small cans. I think they're six ounces. But, you know, just a small can that the tomato paste usually comes in. Okay. So I'm just going to mix, stir that stuff in, and mix it in. Okay, so I've gotten this um, tomato paste mixed in with all these onions and garlics and everything. And now I'm going to add some um, red wine. If you want red wine, then you don't need an expensive kind. You don't want cooking wine. Um, but if you have it, that's okay. But um, I mean, it can be screw top. It doesn't have to be cork wine. But anyway, just an inexpensive red wine. It's going to give it some good flavor. So I don't know how much I'm going to use, but I'm going to start with a cup and see what happens. Because we're going to need to cover that meat. Alright, there's a cup. We're going to stir that around and let that um, mix in. You know what? Hmm. I don't like to, I don't drink wine. Because I just don't, but I'll eat it, yeah. Because <laughs> it just makes food taste good. Okay, so I got about a cup and a half in here. It doesn't matter how much. But like I say, we're going to want to cover that meat in a minute. So I'm going to let this cook down a bit. 
And then we're going to add some beef broth, get it all blended in, and then we're going to put the meat back in. Okay, so we've been letting this um, wine cook down for, I don't know, maybe four or five minutes. And actually the alcohol evaporates off of here and it just leaves the flavor, which is good. So don't be worried about giving this to your kids or anything because, like I say, the alcohol is going up in this smoke you're seeing right here. <laughs> now I'm going to add a little bit of um, beef broth. If you don't have any, you happen to have chicken broth, that'll be fine too. Okay, so I don't know how much I'm going to add, but I might get some of it going in there now. Because now we're going to need to blend this in. But in a few minutes, we're going to need to uh, put that meat back in here. And then we'll see how much more of that beef broth we can add. Okay, so we just stirred this stuff around for, I don't know, a minute, maybe two. And now we're going to be putting our um, short ribs back in here. Folks, and this is what they're going to cook in for a couple hours. This good tasting stuff right here. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit more seasoning. I've got a couple of bay leaves I'm going to throw in here. Because we put this stuff in a lot, of, a lot of things we make. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. I went over to my neighbor's house. who has got an herb garden and got some rosemary. I hear this stuff is good. So I'm just going to throw these in there. See what happens with that, huh? Well, I'm just going to add a little bit more um, beef broth to kind of um, raise the level of this stuff. And a lot of this is still going to cook down over time. Aye! So we bought this sack of um, potatoes. It's a variety. It's got red tomatoes, Yukon, and some other kind. I thought it was kind of neat. And they're very small, new potatoes. So what we're going to do is um, steam these later. And toward the end of this, after they're steamed and soft and basically cooked, we're going to toss them in there and let them soak up this stuff. And then that's going to be supper. So all we're going to do, I'm going to light the oven and get it up to about 275. And then we're going to put this in there, set the timer for about an um, hour or so. Um, take them out, just turn them over is all. To make sure that you know both sides get cooked good. Put them back in for another hour. And then we'll um, do a, um, a tenderness test after about two and a half hours. Okay, see you then. Did you know Cajun Cooking TV has a cookbook called Cajun Cooking Made Easy? Purchase today to enjoy our full recipes, instructions, links on how-to videos, and much, much more. Okay, it's been about 90 minutes, so I'm going to pull these out and just check, see how tender they are, and turn them over and make sure both sides get cooked well. So I'm going to turn them over. You can see how they're not totally covered because this pan is kind of shallow. So I'm going to turn them over and put them back in there for another 90 minutes. Okay, it's been all together three hours at 275. These things, now let me check them to see how they, if they're tender enough, but I think that they should be. Give them the spoon test. No knife test, a spoon test. Good Lord, they break right apart. Glory be. Neighbor, I suspect this is going to be some fine eating. Now what else we have is we steamed these potatoes. I need to tell you about that. And what I'm going to do, I think, is just dump them in here. Without try, trying to do it without splashing. And let them... Put them in the empty spot. Move these out the way. Going to drop these in. So what I'm going to do, the meat's done. You saw that. You just cut with a side of a spoon. The potatoes have been steamed, so they're, they're pretty, um, pretty warm. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the lid on this, let it sit for 
five or ten minutes, let these potatoes soak up this, um, our concoction, our gravy. Anyway, so this is Cajun Cooking TV. I'm Mike, Farrell's husband. Um, if y'all want more of me, hit the, say yes, Mike, or say no, Mike, whatever, down in the, in the um, if you like our show, um, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. And even better, subscribe. And if you subscribe, hit the bell notification, because you're not going to get bugged or anything. What it's going to do is notify you when we throw out a new video, and we do one every week. And they're getting better and better, because I'm pulling the menu items for stuff I like, and I like good stuff. So anyway, this is Mike with Cajun Cooking TV. Beryl's still around. In fact, she's on the camera. At, we do have a cookbook, I come to think of it. <laughs> Where can folks go and get it? Um, we do have a cookbook. It's called Cajun Cooking Made Easy. There'll be a link in the description below. We also have a website you can go to. It's a blog that has pictures and our recipes and everything. CajunCookingTV.com It's a wrap.